Co-sleeping and various sleep products cause controversy around sleep safety, but it's important to be in the know. We're going to delve into what parents really need to know and how to stay safe with your baby. There is no question that we have safety guidelines for a reason. Just because something didn't do any harm generations ago, or it's quite typical practice in other countries, doesn't make it okay now that we've advanced in our research and knowledge. Professionals dedicate their careers to learning causes and impact of practices so we can all keep ourselves and our little ones as safe as possible. And at The Sleep Nanny, we always advocate safe sleep as a primary objective. A new story reported the death of a two-month-old found to have been sleeping in an unsafe circumstance and the parents claimed to have not known any better. No parent would intentionally put their baby at risk, so is there a lack of education on this topic? It's not just different countries, but even different regions in the same country can offer varying amounts and varying quality of advice to new parents. Whilst we do have standard guidelines and trusted resources, getting that information into the often bewildered minds of a new parent, there is no standard practice for delivering that. We are very lucky to have resources like the NHS, Lullaby Trust and World Health Organisation for sleep safety guidelines. So what can you do today to ensure safer sleeping for your baby? Guidelines tell us that we must place a baby down on his back to sleep with feet to the foot end of the cot. No loose covers or blankets and no pillow under the age of one. Basically, you should ensure that your baby's cot is as clear as possible, clear of teddies and toys, and be aware that many sleep aid products, such as cot bumpers or nests, are classified as unsafe too. Always refer to the Lullaby Trust guidelines if you are unsure. The location of the cot is key too. Make sure it's not next to a radiator or near a window, and don't smoke around the baby or in the room the baby sleeps in. Temperature is a key safety consideration as well. You want to ensure that your little one is not too hot and not too cold. A thermometer is really helpful. Um, be sure that the bedding is appropriate. We're really lucky to have safety approved sleeping bags and sacks that not only ensure the covers are where they should be and they stay there, but also they helpfully come with a guide to what tug is appropriate for summer and winter. They also provide great reminders and guidance on the ideal room temperature for your baby to sleep in, which is 16 to 20 degrees centigrade. Please be aware that this is not an exhaustive list. For example, co-sleeping is a whole topic in itself that I'll cover separately. I would urge anyone to refer to the Lullaby Trust in the meantime for any further guidelines. I'd love for you to comment below and share did you feel well informed about sleep safety when you first became a parent? Has there been a particular resource or form of support that has helped you? Comment below and let me know. Being tired, exhausted even, can cause confusion and memory challenges. We joke about baby brain, but it can be seriously dangerous. Help is available, so don't wait until you're dangerously sleep deprived before reaching out. If not to a friend or family member, then to a professional. Common sense plays a part too. The sleep environment for a baby under supervision during the day may look quite different to the sleep environment at night. For example, a nap in a car seat is likely to happen, but it's unsafe for a baby to sleep in a car seat or similar overnight. There are so many images out there on social media to confuse us. It can feel like a minefield, so do everything you can to make sure you are informed and you're making the right choices for your baby. When it comes to holistic and responsive sleep training, the sleep location environment is something that we assess to make sure it's suitable for the baby or child and the dynamic of the running of the home. Safety, of course, comes first, always. And you'll actually find that the safe solution is typically the most conducive to good sleep too. To make sure you're up to date with current guidelines on safe sleep, click the link to download our sleep safety checklist. And if you know an expectant or new parent that would find this a useful resource, 
please share this video with them so they can learn and equip themselves for safe sleep too. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to see when I share my next video. And until next time, sleep soundly and live with vibrance.